What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the KJ. What we're going to do with it now, and what's been done, and what is working and what's not working. <laughs> so as you guys know, I had some engine issues on this. That's been sorted out. Let's quickly start this up, and now then you can listen for yourself. Okay, so I still haven't really put this in place. And here's my little RFID tag, disarmed. As you guys can hear, it just fires up so easily now. Sounding so good. And also, just awesome I think the fuel might be a little bit low but we'll sort that out later so in today's video we'll be focusing on doing all the cooling lines it's not too difficult it's just the heater core either going to loop that or I'm really going to use the regional heater core in my thermostat housing and just route the pipes I'll have to cut a hole through this ducting and then same out trip trip done I think I'm just going to cut this whole ducting open really easy. So let me show you guys what I got. So first off, I've got our original Toyota thermostat, which needs to go in there. If you can see the issue, there's nothing there to support it. So I've got this 3 8 connector. This will have to be drilled out. This will go sink in, I'll TIG weld it in. This just screws into this 3 8 so easily. Boom. So that's the one. To turn on my radiator fan, I need this housing. So this housing I bought from Automarine. You should go and check those guys out. I'll put the link down below. And all this does is you hook it up in your top line and we can screw in a temperature switch. Very easy. But then again, you can see it doesn't fit. So, I'm going to drill this out and re-tap this to this thread and we should be good to go. That's easy. Now I've got a lot of just random pipes and stuff. We will figure something out. So I think I'm first going to drive off, go get hose clamps, whatever else I need to complete this project. All right guys, so I just got back from the shop. First I'm going to try and drill first hole for the temperature sensor. It'll be right here. And I'm going to try and drill this with stepper drill bit. So let's see how that goes because I have to go quite through a little bit of metal here. I don't know what the previous owner did, but I'll have to drill it out. And then that stepper drill only goes to 18 millimeters and I'll finish it off with a 20 millimeter that I've already got. Push this in, TIG weld this in, and then that should be done. And then we can move on to this sensor where we'll put on my press drill and drill out the hole and tap it. So let's get this done. Okay guys, so as I was drilling out this little hole here, the whole thing just came out. Um, I think it was like an adapter or something, but that just came out. So this plug, I predict is a three quarter inch um, MPT thread or some type of pipe thread. Also, I tried my M20 bolt in there and the definitely not metric thread, but it does actually want to fit in there. So, I'll have to go and search for adapter from this thread to my temperature sensor thread now. I'm not sure where to go to get that. Also, I can't weld on this as this is aluminum and it's not steel. So that's out of the question right now. As you guys have seen as well, I put in a little bit of a cloth in here with a magnet. That's just to catch all the stuff that might have fallen in there. And just my little magnet on my screwdriver and I could just scroll around, there's water in there to see if it picks up anything, but it is actually very, very good. Right, so 
this I'll try and source. Might have to run to the shops again to do that. But let's continue with the rest of the piping for now because this is on the top and it's quite easy to get to. Okay guys, I got a little bit carried away off camera there and I finished installing all these radiator pipes so then my thermostat housing all the way with my temperature switch which will, which will turn on my fan eventually which the plugs is right here and there's a little plug there so tracing back these wires will be going back into the fuse box hook up to a relay and then this will be just grounded down and this ground will go to the relay switch and once this gets hot 95 degrees it will say hey time to switch on the fan pretty easy and that's done the only thing holding me back right now is this so i'll have to go and look for something like that and to get that i need a sample and i don't know how to get a sample now so i'm probably just going to look through all my little tools and little bits and see if i've got something that will fit in there so i know which thread that is it's probably imperial it's definitely not metric okay guys so i made a temporary solution to this issue <laughs> got this huge bolt in there so my heater core lines are in and it's working and these radiator hoses are quite in and nice so let's start up this beast and then I want to talk about what's another issue on this as well. Something that I didn't expect and something that's going to be really interesting to fix. If it's fixable, to be honest. Because I don't know much about this. It is broken now. So let's start this engine up. Okay. So this is in park, if you guys can hear, it won't rev up. So let's put it, it's now in neutral, and then we put it in drive. That sounds much better. Okay guys, so the issue is gearbox. So as soon as I go back to neutral, that's reverse. So let me show you where the prop shaft connects to and there's no spinning. So right there you can see the prop shaft and it's not spinning. And there I just put it back into park and it died. So that's something strange because now this Jeep will only go forward, it won't go in reverse 
and won't drift up in park. Also, even if I'm in neutral, it just wants to go forward. Strange. So I'm starting to think either stuck solenoid or I heard somebody said that it might even be a clutch basket that's broken. So this is going to be fun. I have to take off the sump, drain the oil, take off the sump and probably test the solenoids to see if they open and close. I'm not sure how to do that. I will probably have to YouTube a lot to do to figure out what's going on there. But we'll get to that. So luckily this, this radiator is in and I don't have the temperature switches and sensors connected as yet, but I will soon. That being said, let's talk about the digital cluster. So Jeep uses a PCI bus cluster. That is not really uh, user friendly to, for conversions and stuff because you have to utilize the stock ECU. If you go back into this video, you will see that I ripped everything out. So I don't have that anymore. So if we look at this cluster, I'm not going to use this. This is useless to me. I can't use it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to 3D print my own cluster, build my own cluster, and that's in the upcoming video. So make sure you subscribe and don't miss out on that one. That's going to be pretty interesting and I might even have a sponsor for that one. So lucky guys. So I think I'm going to wrap up this video so you guys see what is my issue at the moment with this Jeep and I'm doing a lot of research before I tackle this transmission. I might even just have to buy a new transmission in the end. That might be the easiest thing to do. And so be it, I'll have to drop the transmission out and either send it in for recon or put a new one in. Still, they're not too expensive, but it's a budget that I didn't budget for anyways. So I hope you guys liked what you've seen. And sorry about this not being an extremely long video, but I do hope you guys stay safe. Cheers.